What's going on there, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. All right, guys, so we are going to continue our coverage over the new 52 Supergirl run, and basically we're continuing the storyline that we have been covering where she had became a Red Lantern. Now, if you're new to DC Comics and you have no idea what the new 52 part means or what is a Red Lantern, let me give you guys a quick rundown. So basically, back in 2011, DC had this bright idea to basically relaunch their entire comic book line, a complete reboot, meaning that everybody is going to restart with a number one issue. It is going to be a brand new universe. Now, with that being said, with all these new books coming out back at number one, Supergirl was one of those books to kind of be with the Superman family line with Superman, Superboy, and Action Comics. Now, when it came to Supergirl, though, this was a series that most of the Supergirl fans did not really enjoy that much. And the reason why, because she was always angry and there really was no character development. And what I mean by that is literally almost every single story, her rage would cause more problems for her, but also for other people. And so with that, you had someone finally come into the office and say, hey, because she's always angry at the entire universe, not just the world, the entire universe, let's make her a Red Lantern. Now, a Red Lantern is from Green Lantern Comics. So when it comes to Green Lanterns, you have different Lantern Corps out there. Of course, we know Green Lanterns stand for willpower. But when it comes to other Lanterns, they represent other things like Yellow Lanterns represent fear, orange, greed, blue, hope. But when it came to Red Lanterns, they represent rage. Now, with that being said, though, when the new 52 launch, the Red Lanterns actually had their own series, which honestly was a very interesting series because a lot of folks do love the Red Lanterns. And so they basically said, let's make this a crossover storyline between Red Lanterns, Green Lantern, and also Supergirl, because we're going to make her a Red Lantern. What will happen when you have an angry Kryptonian getting a Red Lantern ring? It could lead into a lot of different problems for the entire universe. And so that is the storyline right there. Now, when Supergirl had joined the Red Lanterns, she actually joined the Red Lanterns at the wrong time. And what I mean by that is, when she joined the Red Lanterns, you did have a civil war happening between two different groups of Red Lanterns. And let me explain why. Because before Supergirl had joined the Red Lanterns, Guy Gardner had joined the Red Lanterns. Now, Guy Gardner was originally a Green Lantern. Matter of fact, he's known as the second Green Lantern from Earth. Earth. Now, with that being said, though, he did leave the Green Lanterns because he felt like he did not belong there anymore. And so he joined the Red Lanterns because it felt like a perfect fit for him. Now, he was also kind of like a spy for Hal Jordan as well to kind of watch over the Red Lanterns. But as soon as Guy had joined the Red Lanterns, it led to a civil war between him and Atrocitus, where Guy Gardner, of course, was trying to turn the Red Lanterns into something good rather than bad. Now, he was able to defeat Atrocitus, but Atrocitus has came back. Now, with that being said, though, before Guy Gardner had joined the Red Lanterns, Atrocitus did make nine new Red Lantern rings to basically kind of boost up the numbers of the Red Lantern Corps. Now, of course, one of those rings actually went to Supergirl. Another one went to a character we saw in our last video, Judge, and another one went to a character that Atrocitus had already recruited. Now, there's still six other rings out there still, but of course, who will get those six other rings? Now, you do have Atrocitus and Guy Gardner kind of going around and trying to recruit these other Red Lanterns, but at the same time, though, they're also trying to find out different game plans they could do to hopefully hurt the other groups. Now, with all that being said, though, Guy Gardner had actually told Supergirl to leave his group and leave this civil war completely. And the reason why, because he felt like she does not belong in this kind of civil war. Like, yes, she is a Red Lantern. Yes, she was able to control her rage and became better. But the problem is, though, he felt like that because she's a kid, 
She needs to be away from war. Like, basically, go live your life. You're still young. You have so much to live for. Go do it on Earth. Get away from this war. And so Supergirl, at this point, is no longer part of the Red Lantern Corps, but she still is a Red Lantern. And you have Guy Gardner and his crew getting ready to actually battle against Atrocitus very soon. And that is why when we actually do pick up with Supergirl, you do have her right now flying through space, but she's heading towards the home world of the Green Lanterns. Now, the reason why she's heading towards the home of the Green Lanterns is because Guy Gardner told her to go there and to hopefully find a safe way to help her remove the Red Lantern ring. Let me explain why, because usually when it comes to a Red Lantern ring, it basically replaces your heart, meaning that if you do remove the red lantern ring you will die and so what is guy gardner saying is that you need to go over to the home world of the green lanterns and find a blue lantern because blue lanterns are usually known to kind of help red lanterns remove their ring without dying kind of help reversing the effect of the red lantern ring now here's the problem though Right now, currently in DC Comics, there is no Blue Lanterns. And so if Supergirl does go over to the home world of the Green Lanterns, she has to hope that they have a different way to basically help her remove the Red Lantern ring. But then on her way to the home world of the Green Lanterns, she then decides to actually go back home to Earth. And so she does change directions and start flying towards Earth. Now, we actually do pick up with Dysporians. Now, Dysporians are actually a very interesting race. And the reason why, because they go around the universe actually attacking different planets across the universe to help those planets out, quotation marks. Now, what I mean by that is what they usually do is that they attack a planet and basically make sure that planet lose almost everything. And the reason why, because then those people who have lost everything on that planet are more motivated to get everything back, but even more, and to make sure to make their world even stronger to protect. And so for the Sporians, it's kind of like a passage of right, where basically if they attack you, they're trying to tell you you're too weak. You need to become stronger to protect your home world from other alien races who might want to come over here and conquer you guys. And so that is what the Sporians basically do. Now, their leader is known as World Killer Number One. Now, that name right there is actually very important. And the reason why, because World Killers were actually created by Supergirl's father before Krypton blew up. And World Killers were supposed to be weapons used by Krypton to go conquer other planets across the universe. Now, when Krypton blew up, the World Killers had actually survived. Now, Supergirl met four of them before. This is the fifth one, or technically the first one, in the list of World Killers. And she was warned all that time ago that, hey, there is one more of us out there, and he is the most dangerous one. And so this World Killer right here is known as the most dangerous World Killer. But right now, he is telling his Dysporians that, Basically, they need to find Supergirl and make her their new leader. And the reason why, because in the earlier parts of Supergirl being a Red Lantern, when you did have the Sporians attacking another planet as a way to make them stronger, Supergirl and the Red Lanterns had stopped them. Well, mostly Supergirl. But the Sporians saw how powerful Supergirl was, and the World Killer said, she will make a great leader for us, so let's go out there and get her and make her our next leader for our army. 
And so when Supergirl does arrive back to Earth or the space area around Earth, she is captured by the Sporians because basically they put this space net around the area of Earth to catch her just in case she does return. And so when she does return, she is caught in a space net. Now, this does lead into a battle between Supergirl and the Sporians army. Now, at first, the Sporians are not trying to actually kill her. And the reason why, because they want to make her their next leader in line. And so you do have all these different Esporians just right now trying to knock her out. But you're talking about Supergirl, who is a well-known superhero on Earth. On top of that, she is Kryptonian. She's also a Red Lantern. And so she has two powers in one right now. And it makes her a very hard opponent for almost anybody to actually go up against. And so while you have this army just trying their best to calm her down or slow her down, even capture her, they can't do any of those things at all. And so now World Killer has to step in to basically fight against her. And so when World Killer number one actually steps in, he does show that basically he is a very strong opponent for most people who decide to fight against him. And the reason why I'm saying that because in the earlier parts of Supergirl's run, we were told that the World Killers were made by Supergirl's father. But hence the name World Killer. They have to be powerful enough to be a World Killer. And so with him being the first World Killer, he most likely is the strongest one. And so it makes sense for him to be almost at par with Supergirl's powers. And so he does give her an actual challenge. Now Supergirl is able to get back on her feet again and basically beat him down. And they do go back and forth. But then she realized that he's laughing at her. And for Supergirl, she's kind of like, why in the world is this man laughing at me for? And so then you have World Killer explain why him and the Sporians are here right now for her. And so that is the moment you do have World Killer actually tell Supergirl that he is from Krypton. Now, when he says that at first, she can't believe that because you're basically saying that you're Kryptonian and she's kind of like, you look nothing like me. But then he says, no, I am a world killer. Now, Supergirl knows what a world killer is because she fought against world killers earlier in her series. She fought against four other ones. Now, that is the moment you have this world killer say, yes, I was created by your father, but here's the thing. I was a separate experiment. The other four, they were made to conquer planets across the universe. Me, though, I was made to basically empower other planets across the universe. And so with that being said, is him saying the reason why me and the Sporians are going around the universe attacking these planets is because we're trying to empower them to make them stronger, make them better. And so that is why we do what we do. Now, for Supergirl, she hates what she just heard, because even though it's him saying we're empowering these other planets across the universe, they're still destroying a lot of things on these planets. They're still killing a lot of people on these planets. And so, yes, it may not be conquering, but you're still causing a lot of destruction and pain for these other planets across the universe. Now, you didn't have World Killer say, you don't understand, and he thought she would because how she basically been living her life on Earth these last few months or year. Honestly, I have no how I have no idea how long she's been on Earth. Either way, though, he was hoping that with Krypton being blown up and her time on Earth, that she will be more like him. That she'll basically be more of a perfect match to be their leader to continue what they do across the universe. But for Supergirl, she's like, no, because you still cause destruction on those planets that you're basically trying to empower. And so it does lead into another battle between her and World Killer 1. And so you do have Supergirl and World Killer fight once again. Now, while they're fighting against one another this time, Supergirl is full of rage. And with her being full of rage, that means her red lantern ring is getting more power. Because when it comes to red lanterns, 
the angrier you get, the more power you get. And so with her being full of rage right now and anger, thanks to world killer number one, telling her all these different things, the ring is getting more powerful, which means that she is becoming more powerful. And so while she's fighting against world killer, honestly, he can't do anything to her. But while their battle is going on, his body begins to decay away into completely nothing and so when that happens she assumes that she had just killed off world killer and she's wondering did she just become a murderer because now his body is completely gone what happened to him but that is the moment we kind of find out and so we kind of find out that that was not world killer's actual body that in reality his actual body is a parasite body and what he does is that he goes around and attaches himself to other people to basically use their bodies as a way to kind of help him continue to reach his goal, which is empowering these other planets across the universe. And so when it came to the Sporians, he found their leader, attached himself to that leader, and basically used that leader to control the Sporians to continue his mission, empowering planets across the universe. But the reason why he's here right now for Supergirl, because he realized, yes, one, she is Kryptonian, but two, she is really powerful. And so he's kind of like that right there would be a great body to basically take over and still continue my mission, which is empowering planets across the universe. And so right now, his goal is to be a parasite once again and attach himself to Supergirl and take over her body and use her body as a way to empower, quotation marks, other planets across the universe. Now, here comes the problem with this storyline, though, because it does take place right in the middle of Superman Doom. And in Superman Doom, Superman became Doomsday because of the doomsday virus. Now, with that being said, though, he was so dangerous that the Earth released nuclear bombs of kryptonite across the Earth. And so now clouds of kryptonite are just floating over the Earth completely. And so with Supergirl being gone for so long, she had no idea. And so with her trying to fight against world killer number one, because again, he is trying to take over her body, she's flying through kryptonite clouds, which of course is weaken weakening her and making it easier for him to take over her body. Now, even though there is kryptonite clouds surrounding the Earth right now, and yes, it is one of the many weaknesses to Superman and Supergirl. For Supergirl, though, she's in luck still. And the reason why, because she has a red lantern ring. And so with that red lantern ring, she still has some kind of powers to use as a way to kind of defend herself, but to hopefully find a way to actually defeat her world killer number one and so that is the moment we kind of find out that basically where her rage coming back the red lantern ring is getting more powers again and so she's able to kind of get rid of world killer for right now but of course this fight is going to continue on but in a different way and so you do have Supergirl and World Killer actually land in a nearby city. Now, when they do, you do have World Killer realize that there are other ways to basically make Supergirl fall in line. And so what he does next is that he begins to go around the city. They crash in and begin to take over regular people's bodies. Now, this is the moment where we learn that when it comes to him taking over somebody's body, he's basically feeding off their life life energy. Now that right there is actually very important. And the reason why, because the weaker the person is, the quicker they're going to die. And so as soon as he does grab onto one person, they die just like that. And so he'll keep doing that until Supergirl says it is okay for him to basically take over 
her body. Now, she also realized that if he does take over her body, he'll have a body that just has unlimited energy. And the reason why, because remember, Supergirl, Superman, they get power by the yellow sun. And so for Supergirl, as long as he's near a yellow sun, he'll have a body that will have a huge amount of energy that would just never go away. And so it'll be the perfect body for him to basically take over. And also for World Killer, the reason why he wants Supergirl, because she is Kryptonian. And remember guys, he's also from Krypton as well, even though he was just a man-created project. Either way though, it is Supergirl realizing that she has no choice here. And the reason why, because even, even if she tries to fight against him, while he does take over somebody else's body, she'll be hurting that person, not world killer. And so she realized that she honestly has no choice but to go ahead and let him take over her body. And so you do have Supergirl realize that there is a way to actually defeat him. And that way is to make him feel the pain that she is feeling because he is a parasite. And so with that being said, she's kind of like, okay, if I let him take over my body, but then fly through the clouds that are full of kryptonite, every piece of pain I feel, he will also feel that as well. And so she flies over to North America because right now North America has a lot of kryptonite clouds. And so with that kryptonite being in the air and she flies through it, yes, it does hurt her, but it also hurts World Killer as well which right now is making it hard for him to basically attach himself to her body. But her plan does not stop right there because now her plan is that to make sure that he dies with her. She's going to jump into the yellow sun, into the sun to make sure that him and her both are going to die. Now, I know earlier I said that basically she can't die because the yellow sun does power her up. Her cells get powered up with solar energy. And so you would think that, well, even if you jump in there, he may still be able to attach to you or you'll survive or he'll basically die. But it's one of those things where you don't know the outcome of this situation. But then we realize how she is going to die alongside with world killer number one. But we have to remember that Supergirl is a Red Lantern. And when you wear a Red Lantern ring, it basically replaces your heart. And so if you do remove that ring, you basically die. Now, here comes the problem with the storyline. And you see what I mean as we go through this book. Because she does take off the Red Lantern ring. And we are left to believe that she is going to die. But then we have to jump over to Yizmot. And the reason why, because on Yizmot right now, you do have the Lake of Yizmot reacting in a certain kind of way. And the reason why, because basically there is the death of a Red Lantern. When Supergirl took that ring off, she technically died. And so this is Guy Gardner and the other Red Lanterns finding out that there was a death in the universe, a Red Lantern's death in the universe. And then come to find out, it was Supergirl. And so we're left to believe that Supergirl has actually died. Now, with that being said, though, she did this hoping that it would kill her, but also kill off world killer number one, because now he's stuck in the sun with her and they'll basically die together. Except the problem is that world killer does not die. He basically does survive. He's kind of like, listen, you tried your best, but that was not going to work. And so you have world killer actually dump the body of Supergirl into the sun and be like, hey, you know, you tried, but I'm still here and I'm going to let your body fall in the sun and I'm going to find Superman and then take over his body and use his body to do things across the universe. Now, right now, that would probably be a better option because Superman is technically doomsday at this moment right now in the new 52 timeline. But then World Killer realized something is happening inside the sun. And he comes to find out that Supergirl is okay and well because she does pop right back out of the sun supercharged. Because remember, when it comes to Superman and Supergirl cells, they're basically being powered up thanks to the yellow sun. And so when she fell into the sun, 
She just got soaked in solar energy, and so she came out supercharged. Now, this is why I have a problem with this storyline. And the reason why, because I thought originally, if you're going to be a Red Lantern and you wear a Red Lantern ring, then that ring does replace your heart. Meaning that if you do remove that ring, you're technically dead because that is your heart being removed right there. And so right now, this section right here, honestly, does not make any sense at all. Because even though she is Supergirl and she does get powered up by the Yellow Sun, she no longer has a heart actually. Because again, the Red Lantern ring is supposed to replace your heart. But hey, it's comic book knowledge, or not knowledge, logic. And so either way, though, she does come out of the Yellow Sun supercharge. She does grab World Killer 1, and she does throw him right into the sun to basically defeat World Killer Number 1. Which means the story is somewhat wrapped up for Supergirl being a Red Lantern. And so to kind of go ahead and wrap up the Supergirl side of this storyline... But we're still going to continue on with the Red Lanterns just for one more video as a way to kind of wrap everything up we have been covering so far when it comes to this storyline between Supergirl, Red Lanterns, and Green Lanterns. Either way, though, we actually pick up in Los Angeles. And when we do, we pick up in this safe house. Now, in this safe house, we do pick up with this random lady. And she does say that she had just killed off a lot of clones. Now with her doing that, she's hoping that the rest of the clones will be able to actually defeat the Kryptonians or the Kryptonian, which is Supergirl or Superman. And we do see some new characters being made, but at the end, we do see Superboy. And remember, he is a clone, but here's the problem with Superboy. He is a clone of another Superboy from an alternate timeline where Superman had a son who basically went evil and started killing off metahumans to kind of help the human race off. Yeah, that sounds crazy, right? That was New 52 for you guys. Either way, it does seem like he's going to team up with these other clones and possibly go after Superman or Supergirl. And so we're going to cover Red Lantern number 33 as well. And the reason why, because when it came to the Supergirl being a Red Lantern storyline, it was a crossover between Red Lantern and Supergirl. Also Green Lantern, but it was just one book and that was it. Either way, though, it was a crossover storyline. And so even though Supergirl storylines has been wrapped up, the Red Lantern storylines have not been wrapped up. And so we are going to continue our coverage over this storyline with basically the Red Lantern books that kind of wrap up the whole Supergirl being a Red Lantern thing. Now, with that being said, though, we actually pick up with Guy Gardner because remember, at this point in DC Comics, Guy Gardner was a Red Lantern. And also, he was one of the two leaders of the Red Lantern groups because, again, right now, the Red Lanterns are at a civil war. And really, it's Guy Gardner trying to turn the Red Lanterns into good guys, really. Now, with that being said, though, he's at a bar right now feeling sorry for himself, but we do see a friend coming by to actually talk to him. And that friend is Jon Stewart, the third Green Lantern from Earth. But basically, this shows that even though Guy is now a Red Lantern, they're still close friends. And so anytime Guy needs someone to talk to, he can call up John just like that. And so you have John coming here wondering, what does Guy actually need? And you have Guy tell John, I need help with everything. 
But then we jump over to the rest of Guy Gardner's Red Lantern group, where we then actually pick up with Bleece. Now remember, Bleece is one of the members of Guy Gardner's Red Lantern group who's trying to become a good guy now. Now with that being said though, she's right now watching over her dear friend Rancor. Now remember, Rancor was actually the first Red Lantern from Earth, but he was captured by Atrocitus in a recent storyline, and basically Atrocitus had re-unlocked Rancor's anger or his rage. And what I mean by that is usually when you first become a Red Lantern, you're full of rage. You're uncontrollable. You can't control your rage. And so you're all over the place. And so with that being said, right now, Rancor is back in that first state of mind where he's just all over the place, full of rage. And so it's Belize right now hoping that basically she'll find a way to actually help him recontrol his rage. But unfortunately, they don't have a way to do that anymore because the Lake of Yizmat was affected by Atrocitus. Because the Lake of Yizmat was a way basically for someone to kind of get control of their rage and become a normal Red Lantern. And so now Bleece is trying to find a different way to help the man she loves control the rage that he's in right now. But then we pick up with Zox and Skylox. Now Zox and Skylock are basically two random Red Lanterns on Guy Gardner's team. And honestly, after the Red Lantern series end, you don't see these characters that much often. Matter of fact, I don't think you see them at all. Either way though, when it comes to Zox and Skylox, basically right now, you have them scanning different sectors of the universe, hoping to find the other Red Lanterns that Atrocitus has made. Because remember, Atrocitus had made nine new Red Lantern rings, or 10. Either way though, three of those rings have been found except the others have not been found. And so it's Guy Gardner and Atrocitus just trying to see where those other Red Lantern rings are going. And so Guy Gardner had Zox and Skylox basically scan different sectors to hopefully find a Red Lantern ring. Now, here's the thing though. Zox does basically scan a certain sector and when he does, it was a sector where he got his Red Lantern ring, where of course he was full of rage because what had happened to him. And so when he sees that, he feels like it is Atrocitus actually calling out to him. But did we actually pick up with Bleece? Now, when we do, we do see Bleece right now trying to feed her blood to Rancor. And the reason why, because she's hoping that her blood will just be good enough to kind of help him control his rage. Now, of course, he does take a huge chunk of her blood, but instead of controlling his rage, he actually laughs in her face to show that he's still full of rage but he loved the taste of her blood. Now, luckily for her, Zox does come by and basically stops her or stop Rancor from draining more of her blood. But this shows that Rancor is far from being able to turn back to normal again after what Atrocitus has done to him. Now, you do have Zox actually call out to Skylox. The problem is though, when he does, he can't reach Skylox. And that is a problem because Skylox was assigned to scan different parts of the universe to hopefully find other Red Lanterns in the universe. But then we jump over to Skylox. And when we do, we actually do see him right now coming home to his home world. Now when he does, of course he realized what Atrocitus has done to his home world. Atrocitus has risen a new Lake of Yizmat. Now this is huge because usually the Lake of Yizmat is a very huge power source for the Red Lanterns, especially to help out new Red Lanterns recontrol their sanity. But with that being said though, this new Lake of Yizmont is on the home world of Skalax. And when he sees this, he realizes what Atrocitus has done. Now, you do have Atrocitus basically capture Skalax, and he plans on to kill him off because Skalax did betray Atrocitus and join Guy Gardner's side. But this is Skalax showing how weak he is as a Red Lantern to Atrocitus, well, in Atrocitus' eyes. Because you do have Skylox basically beg for his life, but on top of that though, he does tell Atrocitus 
how Guy Gardner is able to actually locate other Red Lanterns, including new ones who just may get their rings. And so with him sharing that information, you have Atrocitus say that he could actually use Skylox for part of his master plan to get rid of Guy Gardner and the rest of the Red Lanterns who basically work for Guy Gardner. And so it's now Atrocitus going on with his master plan. And this is where we are going to end today's video because that is the moment where we actually pick up with Atrocitus and his new Lake of Yeastmont. And what he does next is that he begins to raise what seems to be hundreds of Red Lantern rings from the Lake of Yeezmont to go across the universe to basically find new people to become Red Lanterns, to raise his numbers, and to basically take out Guy Gardner and his Red Lantern group, but then to hopefully take on the rest of the Lantern Corps out there like the Green Lanterns, the Yellow Lanterns, Indigo, Pink, whatever. It's right now Atrocitus trying to build an army of Red Lanterns to basically take down Guy Gardner and anybody else who stand in his way. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video so with that being said please guys leave me a like down below and subscribe also if you have any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but guys i'll see y'all next time later